Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator using free resources as always, or, or should I say as much as I can. Um, this video series, I'm going to try to, I'm going to make this in two, two videos. So, um, so because there's two different parts, okay? But this is by request. I've had a lot of requests on how do I make custom airport signage, uh, directional signage, location signage, and things like that. So that's what I'm going to show you how I do it. It's not the only way to do it, but this is just one way of doing it. Uh, so, the, uh, like I said, the video is going to be broken up into two pieces. The first part, I'm going to show you how I use Krita to make my panels. And then um, we're going to talk a little bit about some rules that you need to understand about uh, directional and location and destination signs for airports. It's very important that you do know this stuff because most of the signage in the sim is incorrect. And matter of fact, to be honest with you, a lot of airport signs that are at airports in real life are incorrect based on standards. Now, first of all, I have to give you a caveat. I am basing my information on the FAA, which is the United States standards, uh, European standards, um, Asian standards, uh, uh, Oceana standards. They might be a little different, but most of the stuff that I'm getting is international standards but yet there's always a little bit of difference um, but anyway it's kind of like learning the grammar in a in a way so on the screen i just have a simple search for uh, runway taxiway signs sizes standard sizes uh, the configuration what they look like and there are many different manufacturers for uh, for the signs. So there, there's different styles. Um, you can pick a style and put all your airports with that style if you want. But I obviously recommend that you try to get pictures of the signs that are at the airport that you're working on. So you can be a little bit more realistic. But... If you notice, a lot of them are simple uh, rectangular cubed type shapes, okay? Uh, obviously, we get into some of the, uh, what do we call them, neo shapes where they are uh, shaped like this where they taper at the top. Uh, so the lens themselves are a little bit curved. You guys make the choice. It's totally up to you. Like here, we have one right here that even has a solar-powered uh, uh, power source. If you want to model those, you can. Uh, so, you know, just find a model of what you want your signs to look at, uh, look like, and go from there. But when I get into part two, where we actually create the, the, the sign element in Blender, um, we'll play with a couple different shapes, all right? Now, I want to talk about a couple resources that uh, you can uh, bring up to do more little research on what you're making. Um... We are going to be working in Krita in this part. So if you don't have Krita and want to learn how to use it, it is a Photoshop clone. And, I, and it's free. It's uh, open source. 
and it is it's it does everything that Photoshop does okay except you don't have to pay money for it uh, I do recommend that you do donate to uh, the source because they work hard to give us good tools just like any other um, open source software support them as much as you can all right so uh, we'll be talking about Krita today as well a uh, couple other resources are uh, if we go over to uh, fsdeveloper.com, I just did a search one time uh, a while back and when I was doing for fonts. And this uh, person right here, Horst 18519, way back in 2014, uh, created a font set uh, for. Uh, airport signage okay and it's free and and even though the font set was created back in 2014 the font set does work in the current version of windows so you're good there so i will put links to all these uh, things that i'm talking about in the description of the video but for the fonts it's called uh ikeo new is the name of the font and you can directly download it from this page here or it will actually take you to the download that you can download the font and then install that into your windows font directory after you unzip it uh, or unpack it extract it whatever you want to talk about so useful to get the I ikeo new font set um, it's it's pretty good it really is you don't have to guess uh, it it he did a good job way to go all right and a uh, couple other resources is um, I found this PowerPoint presentation it's in a PDF format and I'm not going to take you through all of it okay it's up to you um, to bore yourself if you want it depends on how much you want to know about airport signage but this tells you the different standards for all the signs where to put them where they belong what they look at and these charts this chart right here is really helpful to me because it gives you the grammar behind putting the signs together if you have them co-located this is called a co-located sign where you have a location but you also have directional uh, panels that are connected to it and it kind of shows you how to build the sentence all right so this document this pdf is really helpful in understanding the correct way of forming a co-located signage all right now some signs we may not see in the u.s or you may not see these in um, um, europe or asia or australia or oceana oceana uh, that kind of stuff but the FAA standards, and they are international standards as well, but uh, this document is, is, it's not boring to read. It's kind of, kind of cool. It's kind of like, makes me want to go back to my taxiway signs and say, oh, I screwed that up. All right. So, um, Take a look at that documentation. It gives you placements uh, where there's where they should be. Your airports, or especially the default airports, they may be totally incorrect, and you can correct them at this point. So that's this document from ICAO International. Uh, I also found from the uh, Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association the. Uh, the do's and don'ts of signage and I'll have a link to that as well um, but you can take a look and find out how do you do that all right and one other 
bit of intro stuff is um, I like the Lux LED signs. Uh, they're they're nice and simple. It's just one of the companies that make these signs. Uh, they don't sponsor me. Nobody sponsors me. <laughs> but um, it gives you an idea of the different sizes that the panels can be. Now, when I'm making signage, I make them relatively large because there's a lot of us old guys on the sim and we need big signs. Um, trying to see those tiny signs when you're taxiing by is pretty hard. So I usually make them the largest I can. All right, but pretty typical, uh, a single panel that has a letter on it or an arrow on it is somewhere between 32 and 36 inches all right uh, this panel right here is 32 and a half is the smallest size but yet you can get a 45 inch panel as well all right then you have this particular company uh, manufactures half panels that's what the 1.5 and the 2.5 and the 3.5 means that um, each sign if we look down in this right here here is a single panel and a 1.5 panel is a single panel plus a half a panel okay so you if you understand the sizing then you can easily make it now when I when we make our sign I'm just going to uh, pick uh, I'm gonna make my signs 36 inches by 36 inches which is three feet and if you're metric I understand you can convert that um, I work in metric and empirical uh, so I'm comfortable with either one of them all right so I'll put a link to uh, Flight Lights Inc. site so you can kind of look at the size charts and, and do that. All right. So let's get into Krita and get set up and start making some signage. So the first thing, obviously, is if you don't have Krita, you're going to go to krita.org and download it. It's free. Um, second thing that you want to set up, remember, is the font. So here I downloaded the Ikeo new font set. And I put that in my fonts directory, the zip file. And then I, un I extracted it. And I basically take the Ikeo underscore new TTF true type font. And I left uh, right right click and drag that font into the Windows font directory and it will install the font for your system you want to make sure you do that first before you get into Krita so Krita will have it registered when you go into Krita so let's go into Krita so here I have Krita up and it's time to create a new file so I'm going to select new and usually what I try to do is I try to make my drawings proportional to the actual object that I'm making all right so if I'm making this object uh, 36 inches square I can make sure that my I can make sure that my image that I'm creating is also square but remember it's a texture and the sim needs to have the texture the number of pixels divisible by four uh, a lot of people will say it needs to be divisible by two that's not correct it has to be divisible by four all right anyway so, in this case, I'm going to make a, uh, a 1K, um, a 1K uh, image. I can make it 2K. It's just that I have to double my stuff, all right? But I'm going to make it 1024 wide, 
and I'm going to make it 250, uh, 256 high. Basically, um, the signs, when you lay them out, each panel may be 32 or 36 inches, whatever you want. I'm going to make mine 32 inches. But, um, but when you start co-locating, that means adding panels, uh, adding a panel for a new uh, segment, um, each time you add one, uh, it creates a... Uh, elongated rectangle all right and in this case I'm the example that I'm going to use I'm going to use my first uh, let me let me pause and get my thought here okay that's what I was I'm setting this up for a four panel sign does that make sense a four panel sign so i have four 32 inch squares together all right so that means that my width is four times my height does that make sense all right so i'm going to say 1024 for my width 256 for my height and the resolution I'm leaving it at 72 points per inch, which is which is fine for for these type of textures. Then I'm going to hit create, and that's going to create this document that looks like the shape of our our sign, right? Okay. Now we want to set up our grid because each each square needs to be 32 feet, right? Okay, so. If, if this is 1024 crossed and I want to divide it into 4, well, that's going to be 256, right? So I'm going to turn on my grid over here. And I'm going to change the X spacing to be 256 pixels. And then I also have these linked together so it changes both of them proportionally. So I have them both at 256 and notice that we have grid lines on the outside so that kind of gives you an idea of each panel now what we need to do is simply click snap to grid okay so i'm going to create four panels the first panel that i create is going to be a is going to be a location panel which is black with the taxiway that you're currently on. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to Layer New, and we're going to add a new paint layer. I'm going to call this black. Okay. Then I'm going to go, while I'm at it, I'm going to create... A another I'm gonna create two more layers we're gonna call this next one we're gonna call this yellow and then these last two squares I'm gonna combine these together all right and I'm gonna make this red now um, I'm using a fictitious sign it may not be grammarly correct in terms of what we're doing I'm just showing you how to basically make each type of a panel all right so let's go to layer new paint and let's call this red all right because we have three basic colors that they use for uh, signage black yellow and red all right so Let's go to the black layer and let's come over here to our uh, our polygon tool, our, our square tool. And if I click here, I didn't click right at the corner. I clicked close to the corner and it automatically snapped to it. And then I'm left mouse drag and drop until it snaps to this one. And then since my active color is black and my tool option is fill four color, which is the black, 
and my outline is no outline, it covers this entire square with the black. All right. Now let's go up to the yellow layer and let's change our active color to this yellow color here, this goldish yellow. Okay, click OK. So that's now our active color. We're on the yellow layer. So select our square tool, S click here, click here, and now we have a yellow background. Let's do the same with red. So let's click our active color and choose this red. I think it's good enough. Um, yeah, so click OK and make sure that we're on the red layer and our active tool is the square and let's paint both of these squares red all right so this is our basic colors now you to be honest with you you would not have a location a direction and a uh, runway hold all on the same line okay normally at the runway hold which is your red informational sign you'll just have the uh, location black and then the red you would not have the yellow on the same sign that is one of those grammar things that you, that you'll have to pick up later on but in our in our example we're going to use it anyway okay Oh, just so you know, if you, you'll you notice me stopping every once in a while, um, that's because I'm tracking my uh, son and daughter-in-law's flight back from London. Um, anyway, um, so we have three basic layers, uh, black, yellow, and red. And we leave those as their own separate layers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a location sign first. So what we want to do is we want to uh, change our active color to yellow. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to layer, new layer, paint layer. And we are going to add text so I'm gonna hit the text tool and I'm gonna come up here in the upper left hand corner it's not gonna snap on this but that's okay I just want to make a box inside of our black box and then that's gonna open up the text tool alright and since I have the Ikeo new font installed I can click that to make that the active font I can hit bold to bold it up and then I want to change the size I'm not really sure how big the size is but I'm going to start off with 128 and see what that looks like all right now I'm gonna select all the text okay and I'm just gonna put the letter A and with this font set you don't have to do a shift A for a capital it's all capitals okay <coughs> so I have my A I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna close that text box and then I'm going to hit the move tool and I'm gonna move my letter A down to where I want it now that is a font size of 128, all right? Um, if you want to see if it's proportional to the real world, you can just simply bring up your, um, your prototype, all right? So if we go back to our prototype and let's look at some signs, um, the text seems almost correct to me uh, you can make them bigger if you want to it's totally up to you I think 128 in this particular case might be good but if you don't like it just hit the text tool 
make sure that you're on the actual text vector layer and double click and that reopens this dialog and you can highlight your text and change this change the size let's go to um, let's go to 156 and then save and then close and that makes the text a little bit bigger obviously okay but to be honest with you I think the 128 was good enough so I'm gonna hit that text tool double click that select my text change that back to 128 it's totally up to you it you guys are the artists all right and then you put that text where you want it all right so that is that is a location panel now you guys might be wondering well where is the yellow box that goes around that a okay well you can create a new layer if you want this square all right now if you notice in the pictures let's look at our prototypes again if you notice in the pictures sometimes you see the yellow box around the location and then sometimes you don't see the yellow box around the location like in this example right here all right that's part of that grammar I keep telling you guys about when a location sign is by itself it has the yellow box around it but when a location panel is co-located with a directional panel it does not have the yellow box around it and that's part of that international standard now not all airports follow the standards to you the airport's not going to get in trouble because there's a yellow box around this w or whiskey okay they're not going to get in trouble for that but just because just just know that the standard is if the location sign is all by itself just the a then it has a yellow box yeah you would have to have the yellow box on it but when you co-locate it with directional it does not have the yellow box but if it does you're not going to get in trouble all right but anyway we're going to make a yellow box just so you can see how i make the yellow box so back in Krita. I'm going to go to layer, I'm going to go to new, and I'm going to call this uh, yellow box one, okay? And with yellow box one hi highlighted as my layer, my active color is yellow. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to hit my square now if I click right here and I drag down to here try to make that as as centered as possible and I release I get a yellow box inside of there okay so we made the first part of our yellow square okay or our yellow outline but we need to make a second second part so I'm going to uh, go to layer create new paint layer and we're gonna call this one uh, I know it's gonna be black but <laughs> it's part of the yellow box so I'm going to say I'm gonna name this yellow box part two basically And I'm going to change the active color to black. Hit OK. 
and I'm going to come up here and with our square tool here. Now, I could have done this another way. I'll show you here in a second. But we're going to make this box like this. And I don't really like it already because I'm too far down on the top. But if I made a box like this, I have an outline box. The only thing I need to do is I need to take our letter layer and move that up in the chain so it falls on top of that little black square okay now another way to do that and I'm gonna call this yellow box 3 I'm gonna turn off the black I'm gonna turn off the yellow and I'm going to choose our yellow color I'm going to go to layer new paint layer and we're going to call this yellow box three because this is another another an, another way of making that yellow box box three okay with yellow box three selected active color selected if I come over to tool options and change fill to no fill and outline to brush which is going to be the yellow and if I come up here and I make a square you see it snapped to that that grid line which I didn't want it to do okay so I'm going to edit undo okay I'm gonna select over here select here Okay, notice that my size is 600 pixels up here. All right, so let's undo, change that to, let's say, let's type in 10. All right, and then come up here to our square tool. Select here and make our box. Now we have our yellow box that goes around it now it looks fuzzy um, basically you have to it it's painting it's painting that uh, yellow box based on settings of sharpness okay that's why I used the two squares to make my box so I get a nice crisper outline for the box all right now you can turn off this dithering effect uh, by selecting your tool and playing with the graph for the softness to make those to have uh, hard uh, hard surface hard hard edges okay but I don't want to take really the time to show you to do that right now but you can force it not to do this 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 softening of the edge you can harden those edges all right so let's turn off box three and turn back on yellow box one and yellow box two all right see how crisper they are because i made those out of two squares all right now notice that the a is a little fuzzy and that's just because I'm using, I'm making a 1K image. And if I made my, uh, if I made my panel, instead of 1024, I made it 2048 wide. And then the height was four times less than that. Then your letters will be crisper. Okay. So that's one way. So that's a location. Now, remember the location is, if it's all by itself, just on the taxiway, it has the yellow box. If it's co-located with a direction, with a yellow, it won't have the yellow box around it. Okay? Just, that's just one of those grammar things. Okay, now, let's do the directional panel. Okay? So, we have the yellow turned on, 
right, the yellow. Now we want to add text to that, all right? So our text is gonna be black, so let's change our active color to black. And let's create a new layer. And let's call this DIR for directional, okay? Then we're gonna use our text tool and we're going to make a box. Now the box doesn't have to be perfect, all right, because uh, we're going to base it off of the size of our text. We're going to choose our font, which is the IKO New, bold, just, just so it's crisper. We're going to change our font size to 128. And we are going to select all of our text to replace it. And we're going to call this Bravo. Okay. Now we're going to save this for now. Save and close. And it puts our B, our Bravo, onto our sign panel. All right. So there's our Bravo. But usually you're going to have an arrow. Uh, dictating which direction that Bravo is from our location or the direction that it goes all right so what I'm gonna do is go back to the T for the font make sure I'm on that layer double click and go back into the dialog and with this font set if you hold shift 1 you get an arrow okay you get a back arrow Okay, if I backspace here, if I do shift 2, I'll get the at symbol, which doesn't exist on the signs. If I do a shift 3, I get a uh, taxiway hold symbol. If I hit 4, I get a directional arrow. arrow, arrow, arrow. Okay, shift 5, we're going to use the right arrow. Okay, now if I did a save and close, notice that our black arrow is going off of our panel, right? Okay, so if I do the move, and I move this whole text string over to this box, notice that my right arrow is into the red, okay? Now, that particular company, the Lux Lights, they manufacture half panels so I could make a half panel and make that yellow or for this particular case I can try to close in the gap between the Bravo and the arrow so with the text tool selected if I double click I get back into text mode and if I select both of these texts and I type in minus 20 it closes that gap a little bit. So I save, close, and now my arrow is getting closer to being on that yellow, right? But it's still off of our yellow panel, all right? Now, one thing you need to know about Krita or even uh, Photoshop is if we go to the text tool and double click on that text tool, I cannot enter a number smaller than minus 20. If I do minus 40, notice it will not, it does not allow me to type in a 40. All right, minus 20 is the smallest uh, letter spacing that you can have. All right, so what I would do in this particular case is I would backspace over that arrow hit save, close, and I would create a new layer, layer, new, paint layer, and then a new text symbol. Make a box in the same location. Do bold, do my font, IKO new, select all my text, and shift five was it yeah shift five make my font set 
my font size 128 hit save close and I would move that arrow onto my box just like that so they're two separate text images all right one for the arrow one for the Bravo okay and then you basically and if you wanted to you can take you can take both of these layers by holding control select both of them and I think if I remember I can right click I'm, I'm sorry I can right click let's try this again control right click and merge these two together and then I can move them together at the same time okay all right let's uh, do a file save as and since this is uh, Akron that I'm playing with, I'm not, I don't want to play with Akron. I want to play with my 5 Alpha 1 airport package sources, textures, um, mo model lib texture. I want to call this, uh, I'm going to call this TX sign dot kra that's for a creta file so i can come back and and edit this all right but for now we'll just call that this for right now okay we saved it as a creta file so we can uh edit it later if our sign is different we can use one as a template and then make changes and then save those individual files if we wanted to uh, export them out as individual PNGs. All right. Now we're going to work on the runway hold informational sign. So if we look at our prototypes, um, it's white letters on a red background. Sometimes you will see them outlined in black, and then sometimes you will find them without black outlines like this one here okay and I I think that has black outlines this one has black outlines not all of them do okay like this well that's a image that's not a real photo um, but sometimes you'll see them with just uh, white letters with no background with no out black outline it's totally up to you just look at your photo of your airport to find out if it has a blackout outline or not this one does not okay but I'm going to show you how to make one with and without one making one without one is easy all right so let's go to layer new paint layer we need to change our active color to white so our white is the background so I'm going to hit the flip button here and move white to the active foreground color all right and just like making any other text layer I've already created the new paint layer I'm going to go to the text tool and I'm going to make a box that encompasses this whole panel, these this double panel, just like this. All right, that opens up the text tool. I'm going to hit bold because I want them to be crisp. I'm going to select the text. One minute. I'm going to select the font type. Then I'm going to select the text, and I'm going to make a runway combination. Uh, let's make it easy on my brain let's go two seven left and zero nine right 
Is that correct? I think so. If I'm going off, yeah, that would be, uh, all right, so if it's 2 7 left, it'd be 0 9 right. Hit, oh, change the font size to 128. And hit save and close. Notice that that font size, that size is not going to work, right? But that's okay. We don't necessarily need it to always be the same. Well, we do need it to be the same. Um, but we're going to come over here to the edit layer or transform layer. And I can grab my handles and I can squish that. The font size height is still the same, okay? Because I just squeeze them together. Then I can arrow them, I can move those down to where they belong, just like that, okay? If I hit the arrow, the edit arrow, then it crisps. It makes them crisper, all right? So I could save this out if it didn't have a black out outline. I can save this image out and use that to make my sign. But what if I want a black outline, all right? Well, we need to make a new layer. So let's go to, uh, let's click outside of there. Go to layer, new paint layer. All right, and let's call this one uh, letter OL for uh, outline, okay? Now, let's drop down, back down to uh, layer vector. Actually, you don't really have to, but uh, let's drop down. Yes, you do. Um, let's drop down to vector layer four and come down here and hit the contiguous select tool and select the white area only and notice how it puts a mask around that that letter now if I hold down shift and click another one it selects each one of those individually just like that okay and now I have a mask of just those white letters all right let's select deselect if i choose similar color selection tool instead and then select inside that white i get all of them in one shot all right so that's two different ways that you can uh, select the white as the mask all right now we want to make this a little bigger this selection a little bigger than our letters our numbers okay so with those white letters selected what i'm going to do is come up to select and i'm going to grow our selection and i'm going to grow it by five pixels so i'm going to hit five and hit OK and notice that our mask is a little bigger than the numbers right okay so we're on to something so now we are going to go to our letter outline layer we're going to make our active color black I'm going to come down to our fill bucket click on our fill bucket and I'm going to click inside of there and now you notice that it makes our letters black right but that's only the mask now if I come down if I take letter OL and I drop it down in our order the red, the white letters will come to the front okay then I can go to select deselect and now we have white letters with a black background. Okay, you with me? You see how I did that? So if, if you wanted these lines to be thinner than what I have on here, 
you just change the grow okay but you'd have to do that uh, you'd have to undo what you just did so um, if I come to paint layer 4 and I right click and I remove that layer how come that didn't work Oh, because it's vector layer 4, right? Click, remove layer. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. That's one of the bad things about doing this. Uh, let me pause and find out what I did wrong. Duh, I just chose the wrong layer. Uh, let's go to letter outline. Right click and remove letter outline. Alright, so we're back to our white letters. Let's say that 5 pixels was too big for our outline so let's go to layer new and let's call this paint layer 5 let's call this our letter ol okay so we create a new letter ol go back to vector 4 which is our white letters okay that's our white letters and let's do a similar color selection so now we have that mask that goes around our white letters. We're going to go up to select, grow selection, and we're going to make this, let's make this uh, three. Okay, so our, our outline is not as big as it was before. All right, then we're going to go to letter outline. We're going to go to our fill bucket since our primary color, our our four colors black fill bucket and then fill that in okay and if your order is not all you have to do is hit these up and down arrows over here to change the order of the layer being drawn then you can go to select deselect and that creates your image all right now let's do a file save so it saves our Krita file the next and last thing in this video is we are going to export this this image out to a PNG to use in blender okay to save as a PNG for all those people that are in Scotland look up and wave to my son and daughter-in-law <laughs> Actually, they won't be there by the time this video is up. All right. Anyway, we're going to. So now we have a txsign.creta file. Uh, we've saved our changes. Now all we need to do is export this out as a PNG to use as our texture in Blender for our sign. Now, in the real world, you better not have a sign that looks like this. Okay, at a hold short, you should only have the location and the runway designation. All right, a directional sign will, in this particular location, would be on a separate panel. Okay, so you would have another panel that has an A and the Bravo with the arrow. That is the correct way it would not be on the same sign that doesn't mean that you have an airport that has it that way because you might have an airport that has it looking just like i have it here okay but this is not correct signage grammar all right and i'm not a grammar not uh grammar police so <laughs> i would uh not dog you for doing that but you would just have the A and then the runway designation in real life. That's the way it should be. All right. And then behind that, you would have another sign with the Alpha and the Bravo. Okay. All right. So I digress. So the next step is to do a file export and go to the uh, Modelib texture directory. Notice we have our Krita file showing up. I would change this 
into a PNG format. All right. Now I'm going to talk about this texture file when we start talking about the uh, Blender portion. But uh, right now we're just going to save this as TX sign, and you would name it. You would name your your image. Uh, according to what the sign says so in this case I would say probably a Bravo uh, a Bravo right runway and if you wanted to you would put its designation 2709 uh, come up with a naming convention that makes sense to you okay but usually I would type in what the actual sign actually says all right then I would save save the compression format and now we have a PNG of this signage so if I open up our file explorer Go to where I have my project uh, right down here scenery projects 5 alpha 1 and package sources model lib and textures folder and here is our PNG right here so I can right click and open open select our file right click open with photos and that brings our image we can view our image and this is what the image looks like okay so that's good now in the next video we're going to take off from here going to go into blender and create our uh, actual sign and I will post that in the next video hey please subscribe if you haven't um, uh, comment below you know what ways do you do this um, you know if you want to um, anyway let's have a discussion enjoy it uh, share the video with your friends colleagues and if you feel inclined to support me, uh, buymeacoffee.com slash myphysicalworld. I also have a Patreon page, and I am going to start uploading a lot of my Blender files for you guys uh, that are patrons, that you can actually have the raw files that I'm using to, to make your stuff if you want. So... Um, my Physical World also has a Patreon page. Anyway, I will see you guys on the next video. I probably made this longer than it needed to be, but I thank you guys for always sticking with me. You guys are awesome. We will see you guys on the next video. See you later.